Hey y'all, it, oh, sorry my headboard made a weird noise. <laughs> it is Sunday, June 10th, I think. Yeah, and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and I am sitting here reading, oh my God, when Dimple met Rishi. I just wanted to start the vlog and I have a thought or an observation that I would like to make. Sorry, my beautiful stretch marks are just so pretty. <laughs> I'm reading and Dimple is talking and she's talking about how guys generally don't come up to her because she kind of like gives has this mean look on her face and people have told me this forever that I have like resting bitch face that has been something that I have been told my entire life that I look really really mean when y'all when people see me from a distance and I don't mean to do it. It's just how I look, I guess. My mom has always said that I do it, like, subconsciously on purpose because I'm so, like, socially anxious. I do have really bad social anxiety, so I generally don't love it when people, I don't know, come up and talk to me. I don't get mad or anything, and I would never be mean. I just, and it's not that I don't want to talk to people or get to know anyone it's just that it makes me so nervous and I just kind of have to take a deep breath and say that it's gonna be fine so but my mom has always said it's like a defense mechanism and that I do it so boys won't come up and talk to me or that girls even because I get I just have a hard time talking with new people yeah it's something that I've been told about myself a lot and that is exactly what Dimple just said basically everything that I just told y'all she said I just love this and I know I've said this so much but I just love when I can pick up a book and relate to the character like I can her mom was like if you always look like you're going to bot them no boys are ever going to want to talk to you <laughs> My mama has said something very similar to me before. I do look so mean. Like, my mom took a picture of me once when we were just out somewhere. And she was like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And she <laughs> stood from a distance and took a picture of me. And I did look like I would, like, bot someone's head off if they ever even came up and said hello to me. But I'm really not like that, I swear. Like, just so y'all know, if anybody sees me in public and they want to say something to me I I really am not mean and I know I look it <laughs> but I'm really really not and I would never be hateful to somebody if they came up and just talked to me unless they were like mean then yeah I'd be hateful but I mean just somebody coming up and saying hello or something I would never ever be mean to somebody like that I just I just look like I might kill you but <laughs> I won't. <laughs> it's actually kind of embarrassing sometimes, but God, I remember I went to this like college thing where I got to stay there for a week and do these seminars and mine was nursing. You basically went to school and just chilled out and stuff and learned some classes just to get a feel about how college would be. You stayed in a dorm and every person I met, they were like, you really look kind of like a bitch like I was afraid to come up and even say something to you but I'm really glad you turned out to be a nice person and I was like thanks <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm really sad that I intimidate and scare people that much my dentist once I had a dentist back in Indiana he told me that the first time he saw me he was absolutely terrified to even say anything to me because he said I looked really mean he was like you just are intimidating and he was like I don't I would not approach you on the street but I'm your your dentist and I have to come up to you and he was like and please don't take offense to this because you're really nice now and now I'm not afraid of you that really honestly does make me feel bad so just a little public service announcement I guess I am not a mean person and anybody can come up and talk to me and I will definitely be very nice um I just feel bad and I've always felt bad about this and I don't know how to fix it it's just my face and like I said my mom probably said this subconsciously I probably do put off this rent like don't fucking talk to me because I have had some incidences where there have been some guys come up to me kind of say some grotesque things 
and then I have to like be like, okay, get the fuck out. It's just, I don't know if I do it subconsciously, but I really genuinely try not to look mean, but I guess I just do, so. <laughs> Sorry if anybody's ever experienced that with me. I promise if you ever wanted to talk to me, I would never have yelled at you or been hateful. I'm going to continue reading and see how much more I'm like Dimple. <laughs> oh my god. Now the lighting's all fucked up. Really? Okay, well, I'm just going to talk to y'all later. So look, if I do it this way, it's dark. And if I do it this way, it's normal. Bright? Normal. Okay, bye. Yeah. Hey. So, um, we're just sitting here, and <laughs> we're very <laughs> bad. We are not good people. We're watching one of my vlogs. I guess some part of me <laughs> said that we were doing a readathon on Sunday. We, <laughs> we were going to do a 24 and 48 hour readathon. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. I remember it. I don't. But, but we didn't write is, it in our calendar. No, we didn't. The and that thing, calendar is our brain. The thing is, I like to say there's two sides of me. One is this like evil bitch, evil <laughs> demonic person. And that's, I'm gonna say that takes up about 75% of my body. And then there's the nice Lindsay, who's really sweet and wants to hug people and give them compliments. Okay, maybe it's less than 70. <laughs> More like 5%. <laughs> More like 5%, that's me. <laughs> no, I'm a nice person, she but, is. but <laughs> I'm not a very affectionate person and I'm very honest, which people mistake for bitchiness is fine. <laughs> She's the one who told me I'd go to hell if I if I lied, <laughs> and told me that my stomach would eat my body <laughs> from guilt. She doesn't lie. I don't lie. If I lie, I laugh. My body betrays me. My body's like, why are you lying? Here, laugh, bitch. She accidentally told a fib in one of her in vlogs. one of my vlogs. She didn't I realize thought, how much milk she goes yeah, through. She I, said six gallons. It's more like twelve. I said six gallons. My foot. Try buy about 12 gallons a week for you. No, I drink 12 gallons of milk. Probably yeah. more than that. And we did not do a readathon on Sunday. And no, I do not recall ever saying that. Yeah. No, you said it. And we even looked at the calendar and We told it. us. We said it was right on our but calendar. But we did not write it down. And so, therefore, we didn't, we didn't do, do it. Because we did not write it down. <laughs> we didn't. So, we're going to have to try to do it again. Because we can't miss two months in a row of a reason. No. That's bad. We we have to write it down. We do. I know. We have to think about when we can do it again. I don't know. I'm I'm. It's not off. been a good week. It's not been a good week. Well, I don't feel good. I don't like, feel good. My head's I'm, hurting so bad right now. I can't really yeah. see. We're trying to figure out a good medication for me to control some of my pain that I'm having, and it's not good. And something that I've been having to do is I've had a reaction to it over the past three months, and it's not been good. And These injections that I've had to yeah, have done. Yeah, for her ribs. The one medicine that I thought was helping me with pain, I couldn't pee at all. So I had to get something different, and it's not fun right now. So I'm just kind of... The struggle is real. Mm -hmm. No, Mama, I went to bed at like, um, no, what are you talking about? You went about? to bed at, I went in your room last night at 8 30 and you were asleep. But then I woke up and came in here with you. Yeah, and but not for very long. Until five. Oh, I didn't know you. Yeah. I knew you came in here with me, but I didn't know you didn't no, go back to bed until five. We watched like six episodes of Project Runway Junior. Oh, I didn't realize, I is? didn't realize how late it got. We're really sorry about that. So, we're going to try to do it another we're gonna time. We're going to try to be better. We're going to try to write it down. I cannot believe we planned it out in everything. I know. We had Cozy out. We had the calendar out, the wall calendar. I wonder I if we wrote it in the planner in my purse. We no, got too many we planners. Didn't. We didn't write it anywhere. <laughs> I feel like we wrote it somewhere. <laughs> we did in our brain, maybe. The bad part that doesn't remember anything. <laughs> We've got three calendars. The phone, the wall, and my planner in my bag. Yeah. Because I need three reminders. <laughs> <laughs> we're really terribly sorry about that, but we're going to figure out a way to do it. And I have not read because I've been sleeping and I've been in a lot of pain. I have had... I've tried to read and I keep falling asleep while I'm reading or listening. I get so sleepy. I just... I, we're both just in a, in a mess right now. And like, it's just because we don't feel good and it's hard when... You don't feel good. Yeah. And it's also like with Crohn's disease, you have to be put on a certain medication combination. Like... I'm on amnitriptyline and I'm on stuff for pain and I'm on shots and all of the stuff that you have to get put on that's supposed to be a good combination to prevent you from bleeding 
and to help the pain get somewhat under control. And what I want more than anything is to have marijuana because it would help. I There is not one person that I've researched that has Crohn's disease that says that marijuana does not cure their symptoms, not cure their symptoms, but make them better and more manageable. But they're not high either. Like they're, it's just controlled. And that's what I want. But unfortunately, I live in a state that thinks that marijuana is just like the devil's poison or something. Not that narcotics actually kill people, but marijuana obviously is just dreadful, but whatever. There's not been a case of anybody dying from marijuana. I've looked that up. No one. Several people have died from narcotics, so, but. It's supposed to be the gateway drug. It's the gateway drug, oh my God. <laughs> We're pussies. waiting on other test results to see what other medications she can take. Take. Because I can't take Humira. Bad reaction. So. And we shall see. Will she? Will she? I'm gonna finish watching this. We're probably gonna watch more Project Runaway. Mm -hmm. I might try to read tonight. We'll see. I'm not tired at all right now. I'm in a lot of pain and there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. I'll just update y'all later, so bye. Bye. Hey y'all, so it's two Wednesday morning. It's about four in the morning. I'm just sitting here. I'm having like a really hard time and I generally don't pick up the camera when I feel this way, but like Sometimes this is all so much. Like, to say it's overwhelming is an understatement. The thing is, like, the Crohn's disease is just so painful. And you're, I'm, like, so nauseous that I can't do anything. And... It's just hard at times to just say everything's gonna be okay. But right now it doesn't feel like everything's gonna be okay. Right now are the times where I just wonder like, or I just tell myself I just don't want to be in pain anymore. So. And then I think bad, bad, bad thoughts. It's so bad and I know it's gonna go away. Tatum, when it's here, it's awful. I just feel like this has utterly taken control of my life and of me. And it's not a good feeling. And this Crohn's disease tells me when I can go to school, when I can't go to school. It tells me how much I get to sleep. It tells me what I get to eat. And putting me in charge of me is just really hard. I'm gonna try to go to sleep. I don't even know if I'm putting this in the vlog. I just don't feel good. And I told myself I had to vlog these moments and not just the moments that I feel good or decent. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do to make myself feel better. It'll be better tomorrow. So I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Hey y'all, so it is Tuesday, June, I don't fucking know what day it is, 11th, no, 12th, so 12th, and I am not feeling good at all, so like basically I have medication that I take that helps me with my pain with Crohn's, and I'm not on that right now, and I'm having to be patient, kind of basically not take anything because the one that I was taking is causing me to not be able to pee. And they had to wait to get it filled. I get it Thursday. After today, I have one more day of this. I'm going to be fine, but I'm in just, I'm in so much pain. And like, <coughs> when I get like this, I throw up. I'm sleepy. I'm in so much pain that I can't function and I sincerely apologize that I haven't been reading. It's just because I can't focus right now because I'm in the pain that I'm in and all I've done is watch Project Runway with my mama who's right there. No. That's what I've had to do and like I said I'm sorry I haven't been reading. I want to put up a vlog though. Oh my god sorry I'm having another really bad pain. I just took something, it's Tylenol, to help. And the thing is, when you have Crohn's disease, 
you're so limited to what you can take. I can't take ibuprofen because it causes bleeding. Any and a lot of over-the-counter painkillers actually cause bleeding. Ibuprofen is a big one. I remember when I first got diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I kept getting really sick because it's it's an autoimmune disease and I would get sick really easily. I would get sick. Like, I'd get bad sinus infections and the one medication that would help get me some relief here was Alka-Seltzer. I had no idea that Alka-Seltzer had ibuprofen in it. I had no clue. It says on the package that if you have ulcers or anything like that not to take this because it will cause stomach bleeding so and I did not know that and because I'd had a doctor tell me that it was okay to take it because I asked but I don't know if they just weren't listening to me or what I would take it and every time I take it I'd be on the floor crying really bad it was it was just was not fun and then we finally learned that it was the Alka-Seltzer because at one night, me and my mom were talking, and we looked at every single bit of medication that I had taken that night. My regular prescription medication, and then the over-the-counter medication that I had taken for my cold. The only thing that could have possibly been hurting me was the Alka-Seltzer. I got off the Alka-Seltzer, and it helped not be so intense, but I actually had to end up going to the hospital so they could get the Crohn's under control because the Alka-Seltzer that doesn't even have full-blown ibuprofen in it caused so much damage that I had to get a Crohn's treatment for a flare-up. So that sucked. I couldn't imagine taking like full-blown ibuprofen, just pure ibuprofen, and seeing what that did to me. So about the only thing I can take really is Tylenol. It doesn't even, Tylenol doesn't help that much, to be honest with you. It's something, it's better than me sitting here and not doing anything about it. I can't I explain the pain that I feel. All I can tell you is I can feel the ulcers. And I always think people think I'm crazy when I tell people that I can feel them, but I really, really can. I've also had a lot of blood. And that's just part of Crohn's disease. Like, I don't want to get into the details because that's not something that I'm comfortable with. You guys can just... You can research it if you really want to, to see what happens. It's really bad and it really hurts and it's very uncomfortable. I cry so much and the thing is like, I don't wanna be reliant on medication to help me with all of this pain. I like don't wanna be reliant on medication, but the thing is I don't really have a choice right now because if I let this go, they have said that it could be fatal if I just sit here and let it get bad. I'm just so tired and it hurts so bad and I don't know what to do, except wait until Thursday. That's when I get it. That's when I get my medicine and that's when I'll feel better. The thing is what I'm really pissed about is next Thursday, or next Wednesday, I should say. I have to get a test done that I got done a few months back. So I have to do another test, and I just literally had to go to the same spot a few weeks ago to get the, an, like, not this test done, but another one. I had a doctor who did a couple tests on me for my Crohn's disease. Every single test that she did, she did wrong. She didn't think I had Crohn's, so the test that she would perform on me she didn't do properly. So there was one test that she did that she did not do good. Came back inconclusive because she did not do it properly. There is another test that she did that both said, showed that I did have Crohn's disease, but it didn't, sh right. It, it showed it, you could see the ulcers, the lacerations, and she like came into the doctor's office. She looked like she had her tail tucked in between her legs because she was just like upset. She was basically upset that she was wrong and that we were right because she would look at my test and she'd be like, oh, you don't have Crohn's disease, you just have anxiety, which is what I've been told my entire life, by the way. And I know what anxiety stomach ache is and then what this stomach ache is. It's completely different. She basically did both of these tests completely wrong. It's just really, it's embarrassing. And so these tests did not get all the way complete because they both have to do with cameras. And the cameras basically, basically, they broke on the way down my digestive tract because I'm not supposed to have eaten anything the day before and some other things that I, once again, won't get into. 
they both had to do with that. They're similar tests, but they're different too. And I, and I have to stay the night in this town that's a, like an hour or so away from me, which is so annoying. And this is the second time I'm having to do both of these tests. And I'm just irritated because she, if she would have done this properly the first time and had any faith in me that I know my body and she just downright thought that I didn't have it and wasn't even going to basically humor the idea is just enough to pacify us is just really really upsetting and you know when you have diseases like this you have to deal with ignorant doctors there's going to be a, a few doctors that you come across that are just plain dumb they don't know what they're doing and what's sad is these doctors have been they've told us they're the best in their field but they're really not if it's not obvious and right in front of them, they're not going to go any further, which is not a good doctor to me. I have one of the rarest form of Crohn's disease. It's in my small intestine, and that's weird. That They said that is, Crohn's disease is generally rare in general, but to have it in that part of my digestive system, they said that is really weird and very rare. It just like, it took them a while to find it, but just because it wasn't in the obvious place, they said I didn't have it. She's just, I can't stand her, honestly. We're just going to continue watching Project Runway. Like I said, I'm really sorry I'm not reading. I'll keep y'all updated. I'm going to end this vlog now and try to vlog more tomorrow, tell you how I'm feeling. So yeah, I'll be able to like take more medicine tomorrow because right now I'm just kind of like trying to ration it. Today is my big ration day where basically I've only been able to take my medication once. That helps me a lot and then I can't take it anymore until tomorrow and I'll be able to like take more tomorrow. It's just not been fun for me. I'll keep y'all updated and yeah, so I'll see y'all next vlog, bye.